Hey guys, it's your one and only Waka Waka Doctor here. Today, I'll be giving you migration tips to Australia. Okay? Now, like I've always told you in my previous videos, uh, not everyone wants to go to United Kingdom or Canada. Um, there are a lot of other countries you can go to easily. And if you check uh, a list of my videos already made, you'll find such countries. This episode is strictly for those who see Australia as a choice. So let's get cracking. Let's go into it. Now, don't forget to like, drop comments. I'll try my best to answer as many questions as I can. Subscribe and turn on your notifications. So Australia. Now, um, there are different ways to migrate to Australia, and I'm going to go through each one. And um, so that you pick out the one that fits best and try to apply. Okay. Now, one of such ways to move to Australia will be to find an employer to give you a job and sponsor you. So that's one route. The second way is to apply for a family visa. Okay. Another way is to go through academics. Okay. And another way to go is consider, um, a working holiday so you can go and just work during the holiday and make money all right so I'm gonna go through each one and tell you how to go about it let's start with the first one that says find an employer to sponsor you so if you want to go because people ask me why is it waka waka doctor that everything you say is always about academics academics now most of my videos are targeted towards traveling easily the best way to migrate easily so for australia there are a lot of other good options okay so if you want to go through the job route all you have to do is to find an australian company that will offer you a job that will give you a work visa and you can eventually leverage it into permanent residence okay now once you've spent two years working for the same employer you just apply for your permanent residency okay make sure you pay your bills integrate yourself into the country and stay on the right side of the law of course okay now you may be able to do this if you use the general skilled migration program okay this approach will only work for certain skill level okay that are approved now the employer must be able to convince the government in australia that there is no Australian worker available for that job and that you are best suited for it. That's obviously and most times not always a problem. Okay. Now for highly skilled jobs like doctors, nurses and medical technicians, it's even possible to come straight into the country on permanent visas. Okay. So bottom line, go through Google, search for jobs in Australian companies. There are a lot of them get a job go through the interview process and if you find someone willing enough to give you a visa that's boom you're in australia the second route is to apply for a family visa if you want to take a family okay now this applies to you your partner your spouse your child or children if you're considering permanent residence in australia now Obviously, if you have someone in Australia who's a spouse or a partner, that even makes it easier, okay? Now, there are different categories under this type of visa. One, you have the partner and spouse visa. Um, you must be the spouse, fiancé or fiancé uh, or interdependent partner of an Australian citizen, Australian permanent resident or an eligible New Zealand citizen. Did you hear those three things? Good. Rewind it if you didn't hear. Come back. The second one is parent and child migration. Okay. Now you might be able to migrate to Australia if your child is already a citizen. Okay. Um, or permanent resident of the country. Um, your child must be a resident of the country. Likewise, minors um, can migrate to Australia as a dependent child of a relative adopted child of a citizen you see so this is the second way you remember i've spoken about job roots i've spoken about family visa while for uno get spouse with the sponsor all right so that's done now 
Another route is if you consider getting a work holiday visa. It's called a WHB. All right, this visa will allow you to leave and work in Australia for up to a year. All right, um, although you cannot spend more than six months working for one employer, so most likely if you're going to spend a year, you have to work for two companies. All right. The downside to this is that the WHB is not an option for permanent residency, but it will be a great way to at least live in Australia for a while and see how things work. And when you get there, you can find a way to now move on and integrate yourself um, properly. Now, you must be 18 to 30 years of age to qualify. You must have a valid passport, so you've done your passport. Um, with six months left on the passport, okay? You need to prove that you'll be able to financially support yourself while you're there, so you need some money in your account. You must also meet several health and character requirements. That means that you must have health insurance, okay? No serious, no, in fact, not even serious, no criminal issues, okay? You cannot have any criminal convictions anywhere in the world, otherwise you won't be allowed. You also cannot have any contagious medical issues, so HIV, TB, COVID, blah, blah, blah. All right. Now, I want to talk about these three together, okay? Um, let me make, let, let's go back a little and talk about the family visa, all right? Now, what are your requirements? What do you need if you have a family? if you're one of the lucky ones that has a family in Australia. Now, if you have a close family member in Australia, um, that gives you, they have a point system and that gives you um, an extra five points, okay? Now, um, the, this is added to the overall requirements when looking at the 190 visa class of the permanent residency. Now, it's worth noting that although it's a little less popular than the 489 visa class that would add 10 points to your overall point score, um, it does also not give you permanent residence status. Okay, now I'll come back to this, but you get the point. So you're going to ask, you say, what is, how do I make my application? How do I go ahead and do my application? So. Let's help you gather all your information for the application. So make sure you provide everything that's relevant to finding work and getting sponsored, okay? Make sure you meet the basic health and character requirements that are eligible, like I've said. Your visa application must include all the checklists on the application form with supporting documents that you must include in the application. And if you're applying online, you have to attach documents online. Okay. Now, in order for your application uh, to be considered complete, you do not strictly need to upload the documents, all the documents, not all of them. However, it will speed up the process. You get my point. Okay. Now, you should provide as much information as possible to reduce your processing time because sometimes it can take as much as six weeks, even three months, but to reduce the length of time, give as much information as you can. Okay. Now, many migratory visas require multi-step processes. For instance, if you're applying for the partner category one we talked about, you must undergo a trial stage in which you'll be granted a provisional visa first. And at the end of that visa period, you now apply for a resident permit. Okay. Now, you submit your application. Make sure you have completed a tax, then you submit your application along with the required application fees. Now, this begins the app approval process. The fees for the migratory visa range um, usually ranges from several hundred to several thousand dollars. Now, this depends usually whether you are applying from inside or outside Australia to get. Now, for example, if you want to migrate to Australia uh, to leave because you're getting married to an Australian citizen, then your fee is different. You're going to pay about six thousand dollars. Okay. Now, if you wish to submit your application in person or through email, uh, you need to download and print, print the required forms on PDF, seal the forms in an envelope, and be sure to uh, include paper copies of all required documentation. Then you mail it to the Department of 
immigration and border, border protection in Australia. Are we going? We're going. Okay. Now, um, Australian immigration has, you know, fully transparent process and is one of the simplest processes around the world, to be honest. Um, it's a point-based system and you calculate it with the help of Australia PR points calculator. Okay, remember when I was talking about um, different classes and points, this is what I mean. But this is what I meant. Um, it allows you as the immigrant to calculate um, your points and check if you're eligible. Okay, Immigrants who are able to clear the PR point system are now allowed to apply for different types by the immigration office. Now, there are two places to start when working out if you meet the requirements for that skilled migration option that we talked about, okay? On one side, you have to get the minimum 65 points on the PR um, scale. And on the other side, you must have an occupation that's in demand. Now, if you want to know occupations that are in demand, just go through the um, description box of this video. I would write a list of occupations that are in demand in Australia. Okay. Now, it's also good if you have a lot of experience. Five years of experience will give you 10 points. You know, if you have eight years experience, that will give you 15 points. So the more your experience, the better. Now, what are the different types of visas you have under Australian immigration? Okay. Now, the major types of subclasses of visas for skilled immigration now, um, you have the skilled independent subclass of 189, you have the skilled nominated subclass of 190, and you have the skilled provisional subclass of 489, not 419, 489. Okay. So, what are the requirements for Australian immigration PR points? Now, um, the PR points calculator is based on the following things. Your age, your language proficiency, proficiency, oh God, your language proficiency in English, <laughs> your skilled employment, your educational qualifications, your Australian study requirements, um, the credential community language qualification, professional years in Australia, your partner skill qualifications, if you have an eligible family member and many, many others. So just go through the Australian PR points calculator and check for yourself how many points you have and if you're eligible. Okay. Now let me, for instance, so I told you some of the criteria. So age, for instance, if you're 18 to 24, that gives you 25 points. 25 to 32, that gives you 30 points. 35 to 33 to 39 gives you 25 points. And if you're older than 40, your points drop. Okay. So your language proficiency, if you have IELTS of eight in each band, then your score is 20. If you have of seven and above, it's 10. Voila, for no score seven, no. You score zero. So things like that, all right? So you just go through the PR points calculator and check out how many points you have and if you qualify. Now, what do you mean? What do I mean by regional study? What I meant was that any degree or diploma or trade qualification that is end that you earned in Australia um, obviously adds more points to you. Okay. When I talked about community language skills, I meant that to get Australian immigration PR points under this category. Um, you need to get skills recognized by NATI, that's the Australian National Accreditation um, Authority for Translators and Interpreters, okay? And if they accept it, you get five points. So, let's talk about another way to get into Australia, All right? Now, let me, let me talk about this, let me mention this, about nomination and sponsorship. Now, candidates who want to apply um, for subclass 190 and subclass 489, this is just for you. Now, the award, um, you're awarded points uh, for being sponsored by an Australian person 
or territory or state. Okay. Now you get five points if the nomination is made by state or territory government. Okay. Um, under the subclass 190, and if if it's um, subclass 489, you get 10 points. Okay. Now there are sponsorship. A lot of sponsorships. You have the Australian Government Scholarship Opportunities for Nigerian Students. You have the Australian Awards Scholarship. You have Australian Awards um, from the foundation of from one of the foundations of the governments in Australia. These awards um, help to assist people based in Africa, for instance. Okay, it provides access to postgraduate education, training, and professional development opportunities. Um, for African countries that are eligible, okay. Now the aim is to create uh, education links and provide knowledge through Australia's extensive scholarship programs, okay. So now for those who, um, I think I should also mention that now um, Australia awards alumni also exist from Nigeria. Um, and that's for say master's degrees, uh, programs and likes. Okay. So for those who would like to go to Australia via the academic route, now this is for you. Okay. Now, a lot of scholarships are available. And again, like I always say, I'm going to put in Dropbox. I'm going to write a list of the scholarships that are available and you can pick any one of them and um, make your applications okay now um the entitlements vary vary for each of these scholarships but it ranges from full cost of tuition fees um, for up to two years some of them even give you economic flight and um, well, economic class flight tickets to and fro from australia including excess baggage so you can bring all your things you know, travel insurance as well. Um, they give you an annual stipend of thirty thousand Australian dollars. Um, cover all your living expenses. Some of them cover basic medical costs. Um, scholars whose family remain in their um, home country may be entitled to reunion airfare, so they can bring your family members to you, allowing them to travel home. You know, things like that. Now, there are top Australian university scholarships and fellowship programs for a Nigerian student particularly and again I'm going to mention some of them but look out for the description box and you have a list full list so University of Queensland Masters of Leadership in Global Development Scholarship for Development Countries you have the Victoria University Graduate Research Scholarship for International Students you have the Sydney Scholar Awards for International Undergraduate Students you have the University of Melbourne Human Rights Scholarship for International Students. The list is a lot. So I'm going to write them in the description box down below. It's huge. Um, Cotton University MBA Global Future Leadership, uh, Leadership Scholarship. Um, University of Newcastle Scholarship for Postgraduate Students. Um, Macquarie University Scholarship for International Students. It's a lot. All right. And you get a lot of benefits. Huge benefits. Um, living allowance of... $36,000 sometimes, relocation grants. Um, you can also get um, health cover, like I said, okay? Now, check out smart, smartygrants.com.au, smartygrants.com.au. Just go through it and read it, all right? Now, general requirements, these are general requirements if you're applying for academic routes to Australia. You need a minimum of second upper class in a course of choice. You need transcript from your past university. You need certified proof of English, IELTS. You need reference letters if you've previously been employed. Your transcript from your secondary school, whatever exams you wrote. You need an updated CV. And your international passport okay there should also be a record of bank statements um, showing that you can take care of yourself uh, usually it's just a cumulative of your tuition plus accommodation fees uh, or a proof of your scholarship okay most institutions in Australia 
require fifty to hundred dollars um, Australian dollars. That's the application fee. Now let me tell you a little secret that a birdie told me. A little secret. You only actually need to have the initial deposit. You know, for your course of study, you don't need to have everything. Initial deposit. Once you have the initial deposit and you pay, when you get to Australia, you jam a jam, and you can work. You can work in Australia while schooling. You can work. So, other than the back of your mind, you would find a job that pays, and you take care of yourself, and you'll be fine. Okay, and the rest of your fees can be paid off um, during the course of your study. Okay, now. Did I say I was going to mention courses that um, permit, allow residency in Australia? No, I said I will list it in the description box which you have to read through. But one of them is IT, another is social work, teachers, accounting. But the list is there, so you can go through it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have tried to be as fast as possible so that I can grab you know, all the information you need. It's huge, but at least I've been able to give you pointers on how to move to Australia. So don't forget, this is a summary. You can go for working holiday visa of 12 months. You can go through academics. You can go through family, spouse, child. You can go with your family and apply for a family visa, or you can apply for a work visa, okay? But all of them are possible, and you don't need an, a very huge amount of money to move to Australia. So let Australia be one of those countries you consider, right? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, comment, leave all your questions, and I'll try my best to answer. Thank you.